Hey everybody, it's Ben and Boz back at you with Excel video lesson number three. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. Thanks for joining us again. All right, the goals of this one, we're going to understand how to insert and delete rows and columns. We're going to gain the ability to format columns and learn how to copy paste. So this one, a lot, uh, there's some formulas we're building in, but it's a lot of printing up an Excel spreadsheet again. So we'll start off by showing you how to toggle between open programs. Not really an Excel tip, but one that will save you a ton of time. Um, then we'll basically figure out how to modify our columns, add new rows, look at copying and pasting information, and then um, selecting all contents of our worksheet. Well, let's go to the template and look at this beautiful Excel file that we have prepared. Beautiful might be a little bit of an overstatement right here. What were you trying to do, Boz? Uh, well, this is Home Depot's income statement. All right. Okay. Do you, um, okay. Maybe it's not beautiful. Well, let, let's go. Let's go find Home Depot's actual income statement from their 10K and see how that one looks and see if it's any better than this. All right. And the fast way to do that is if you hold the Alt key and the Tab key, it brings up all the different things that I have open. And in this case, the financial statements for Home Depot are right over here. So I use the arrow keys to decide which one I want to select, and then I let go. And there we go. You could actually just keep alt tabbing and that toggles between them as well. The tab also moves in addition to the arrow keys. So yeah, you can use any one you want. When you get really busy, a lot of times there's three or four rows in here. And so mm -hmm. using the arrow keys can move up and down. But alt tab is a really nice way to move in between. I never have that many things open, so I guess you do. But, uh, so yeah, You're so right, I, I do. Yeah. So obviously for them right now, they don't have the financials open in the backgrounds, but so they just have seen how we alt tapped it. But so this is how we want it to look. You know, again, some of the, the big takeaways that we can see from that is there's subtotals in this file, um, there's commas, uh, there's little separations between the years as well. So those are some of the biggest things that we are gonna do to our file now. All right, so going back to our file, the first thing that I see is that it's really hard to read and even see, okay, this is net sales over here. And if I go down one cell, I see up top in this area, it says cost of sales, but I want to be able to see that right on the spreadsheet and not having to um, highlight that specific cell. So in order to fix that, I'm going to do what's called auto sizing my column widths. And right in between A and B, when I move the mouse in between, you can see there's little black line with arrows on both sides. When I see that, I'm gonna double click and it automatically sizes the column so that I can read everything that's in the column. That's awesome, but why didn't you just do all four columns at, at the same time? You know, there's a lot of ways to do that. Which one do you wanna do first? <laughs> um, I thought let's just do all four of them at the same time, all I right. suppose. So I know you didn't do it because you were showing them. Thank you, <laughs> boss. I know that you know that I didn't do that. How did you just select everything? So I clicked on A, mm -hmm. and in this case, I just dragged over to B, C, and D, and I'm talking about the actual letter A, not just one cell, because that won't get everything oh, for me. Sure, sure. So click on the letter A, and then A, B, C, and D. All right. And then if you double click between one of the columns, it'll just kind of do them all at the same time. Nice. Look at that. And they're going to have to wait to the end of the video and we can show them even a quicker way they can select the whole sheet at once. But there's even one more quicker way. Yeah. Is you can just click in this top that. corner up here, select the whole sheet, and it's already auto sized. But if I were to double click, then it would fix it for me. We're going to hold off on that shortcut till the end of the video. We will. Okay. Got to give you something to, something to wait for. Look forward to a little bit. Yeah. Well, let's put. Let's insert a column. Um, put it. Uh, let's put a column between the 2018 and 17, and then a column as well between 17 and 16. All right. So to insert a column, the slow way to do it is you can click on letter C, and then right click. There's an insert button right here, and there you go. It inserts a column for you. Now the much faster way to do it, and we learned in our last video, Control Space Bar was going to go ahead and highlight the entire column and then control shift and the plus are equal key either one and that just adds a new one in for us right there and how i usually do it it's just slightly different but go over and if you could yeah, go on to column e just hit control shift plus right now and then just uh, arrow key down once to entire row and hit enter um, add a column, right? yeah yes yes <laughs> go to go to entire column and hit enter that's just kind of how I learned it, so I, just two different ways to do it, whatever you prefer. All right, so it looks like 
we entered in our columns, one of multiple ways, whatever's faster for you is fine. Um, but there's a little too much of a gap, don't you think? I think you should just size that so it's a smaller gap in columns C and E. All right, so to size it, I'm gonna go again to where we had that um, double arrow on either end in between C and D here. And I'm just gonna click and hold on to it until I say, I think that looks about good, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing between E and F. Once I'm in between, just click and drag to wherever I want it and then let it go. You could fine tune it to get it exact, but for this purpose, that's that's fine right there. Absolutely. But, so now we got some columns in there. I think we need some rows because you'll see if you go down to cell Ben B10, uh, there's a formula in there and I mean, it does work. Those truly are the net earnings, but there's no other subtotals in here. We need a few subtotals. Um, so let's, let's put some subtotals in here and let's do one after cost of sales. So kind of the first one. So we're gonna need a row uh, yeah, right there. So again, you sh how would you do it? All right. So again, Boz and I have slightly different methods here, but whatever one works for you is what you should use. So what I would do is hit shift and space bar to highlight the entire row. And then I would hit control shift and the plus key. And that adds a row for me. You go ahead and type in gross profit in that cell a five. And then to add in another row, let's do a row between depreciation and interest. And how I would do that one is control shift plus, uh, and then insert entire row. Just one down? Just, just one down. Just one down, <laughs> this okay. Time. And then hit enter for okay. Yeah, whatever works for you. And then I would type in operating income right here. I think we want, uh, just really one more. I, th I think we just want one more thing. We're, we want kind of a, a pre-tax earnings right after interest expense. All right. All right. So I'm going to do shift space and then control shift plus. And we haven't mentioned it, but you see that the row is always adding on top of the row we had selected. So before I select 11, then I hit my control shift plus, And now um, row 11 is blank and row 12 has that provision. So what did you want to call that one? Profit before tax? Yeah, profit before tax. A lot of different ways they can describe it, but that works for me. All right, there we go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I think that looks good. And now let's go ahead and just populate those rows. So I would go up to cell B5 and we're going to want to do sales minus cost of sales. So I think they learned this in a previous video. Yep. Equal sign for sales. Then I arrow up to, or sorry, equal sign in cell B5. Then I arrow up to B3, hit the minus sign, arrow up again and hit enter, and look at that. Now a neat thing you can do is if you can go back on top of that cell then, when we wanna copy that to the other years, we don't have to redo that formula, we can just hit Control C to copy, or if you've got a Mac, that's Command C. Now go over to D5 and hit Control V, and when you hit Control V, that's a paste and it actually keeps it alive as well. So you can go over to F5 and either hit Control V or actually enter, whichever would work. If you hit Control V, it keeps it alive, although we're not going to use it anymore. You could just hit enter, but then that kind of kills it and, and you could not you know, paste it anymore after that. And so a lot of times when I'm in a series like this, I'll hit enter on the last one just to kill it and make sure I don't accidentally paste that formula anywhere else I don't want it. Good idea. So once you have... So same principle for operating yeah. income and operating income. We start with our gross profit and then subtract selling general administrative and subtract depreciation. Hit enter to get that first formula set. Control Z copies it. Control V to paste. And then on the last one, I'm just going to hit enter. Said it sounded like you said Control Z there, but you said oh. Control C. I could hear you, but yeah. Control C, C as in cat to copy. That's right. Control V to paste. That's right. Control That's right. Z is on new. It is. It we is. learned that in lesson one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but. So then profit before tax. I have my operating income. What is this negative interest in investment income? Should That's I just add like that and you should that? you should actually subtract it so that is a positive interest income. You, um, so you just want to subtract them both off here is what you do want to do. All right. There we go. And then finally, um, we have all of our subtotals there added in. Yep. Uh, what do you want to do now? I think at this point in time I just like to throw some commas on here uh, and just to format a little bit nicer but as a as compared to going column by column to do that, let's do it all at once. And you showed them how they could click right between that A and the one before, but the shortcut to do this is actually a control A. So if you hit control A, 
you'll see that first it just highlights the immediate selection, everything right around. And then if I hit Control A again, it's going to highlight the entire workbook in this case. So yeah. now we have the entire workbook highlighted. Instead of going through each individual cell, we can hit the comma button. And I don't like decimals. Bozzy, okay, if I get rid of the decimals. Please, please get rid of them. We get rid of those decimals, and there we go. We have it all formatted in commas using that Control A button to select everything or all you might think of it. Yeah, and I and I like that Control A. You know, we could have just done one column by you know column B by hitting Control Space as an example, and then we could have hit the you know the, the comma there and, and decrease it a couple times. But then the, that we would have to do that three times. So I think here it was just easier to use Control A. And then maybe the last thing that we can do is, is maybe we would want to bold net earnings just to make that pop a little bit. So you could go ahead and, and, uh, and okay. on that row, go ahead. Okay, so on the highlight the entire row. Yeah. Um, we talked about last time holding the shift key and arrowing over. That would work, but sometimes you have more than three items. So if you just hold shift space bar to highlight the entire row and then hit control B everything will be bolded for you. Yep, absolutely. So I think that's mainly what we wanted to show them. We mainly focused on inserting the columns and inserting the rows. You know, had we inserted one and then we actually didn't mean to, like, so go ahead, Ben, and, and just insert a column somewhere where we don't want it, or, or a row. So you just inserted the rows right there. You certainly could undo that. I mean, he just did it, so you'd probably just control Z that to, to undo it. But let's say you did some other things as well now to get rid of these rows you would just hit a control i would hit a control minus right here and then go to entire row um, do it again control minus uh, you know repeat that arrow you know, down yeah arrow down row. and, and, and uh, before i delete this last one this is where we have slightly different methods i would actually just hit shift space bar and then control minus and it all goes away so you get the same thing anyway it's just a matter of what you want to do and the same principles also apply to columns. So if you do control space and control shift plus to add a couple, and I want to delete those, I can just do control space and then control minus and then control minus again, and they all go away. Awesome. All I right. think we covered everything. I think we did too. Thank you for tuning in again to lesson three, and we hope you join us again next time. Cheers.